want movies. Cinderella, what brings you in today? Ugh, I don't know. I feel like I'm losing myself. Like, I'm just the prince's wife and I have to be perfect and live up to this image of a princess. Sounds like you're feeling a lot of pressure to conform to expectations. Yeah, yeah, and the worst part is, I don't even know if the prince really loves me for who I am. Sometimes I think he's more in love with the idea of having a trophy wife and I'm just a decoration. Have you ever considered the role that your father's death might be playing in your relationship with the prince? What, are you suggesting I have daddy issues? Well, it's not uncommon for us to transfer feelings from one relationship to another. Especially in the case of a loss like the death of a parent. Yeah, well, my dad died after remarrying my stepmom, and I was already an adult, so I worked through that already. Hmm. You know, sometimes we have to look at the things that make us most uncomfortable in order to make progress. Well, the only thing that makes me uncomfortable are these dresses they make me wear every day. <clears throat> I'm telling you, my old life was very underrated. Hi. Can I help you? I'm here to deliver your food order. Yeah. Oh my god, thank you so much for bringing that over. Do you want to say hi to my roommate? She'll be really excited to meet you. No, I'm, I should get going. I'm not supposed to stay on one order for too long, so... Are you sure? So you're the food delivery guy, huh? Yeah, that's me. Oh my gosh, he is so cute. Yeah, he's a really nice guy. So what do you like to do in your free time? I like to play guitar and go hiking, and I'm also a big fan of sushi. I love sushi too. We have so much in common. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you have a girlfriend? No, I'm actually single. How about we go out sometime and we try some sushi together? I don't know if that's the best idea. I mean, I'm just a delivery driver, you're the customer. Well, don't let our roles define us. I guess it couldn't hurt to try. How about we meet at that sushi restaurant down the street, say tomorrow night? Sure, sure, I'll see you there. Can't wait. Can you believe it? Your parents actually like me. I was so nervous to meet them for the first time. Yeah, it's great. They're amazing. They're kind. They're welcoming. I feel like I fit right in with your family. Yeah. What's wrong? You don't seem as happy about this as I am. Well, I just, I don't know. I never really trusted my parents' judgment. What? And I was always kind of a rebel when it comes to what they like for me, and this is sort of just making me second guess things. Can't you just be happy that we're all getting along so well? I want to be. I just wasn't expecting this. You're being irrational. Your parents like me. I like them. This is a good thing for us. I'm not seeing it that way. You can't base your relationship on what your parents think. I just need some time to figure things out, okay? You're not like... Yes, honestly, I think we should break up. Jane, you're being ridiculous. I can't just ignore my feelings. I have red flags and my parents liking you is one of them. We can work on this. No, no, I'm sorry. I, I can't do it. I can't see you anymore. Well, can I at least get your parents' number? Oh my God, Liz, you won't believe what happened last night. I had my first kid. No! no way! Tell me everything. So I was at the party with Tim last night, and he was like so sexy, and we were like talking all night. Oh, and then what happened? And he like leaned in, and I had like butterflies and fireworks and all that cheesy stuff they talk about. Oh, is he a good kisser? What was it like? Was it perfect? I mean, it wasn't like perfect, perfect, but it was my first kiss, so that's all that really counted. What wasn't perfect about it? His lips had like this slimy, fleshy residue on it. What? And he had a little bit of food stuck in his teeth and his tongue came really far out of his mouth before our lips touched. Literally side eye. And his breath kind of smelled like old milk, but not that old. And when we finally kissed, he made like this heaving sound. Like, <gasps> he's so alpha male. <laughs> that sounds disgusting. Well, it's not like I have anything to compare it to. It was my first kiss. That's all that really matters. So this is weird, huh? <laughs> Talking in person for the first time after Talking online for so long? Yeah, yeah it is. Look, I have to admit something. I was a little bit nervous about this date. Why? Well, I mean, you always use those filters on your photos. You look so different now. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to deceive you. I was just trying to put my best foot forward. No, no, it's okay. It's just, I guess I hoped you'd look as good in person as you do online, but. You look different too. What do you mean? You know, I'm just so used to seeing you with Fuller lips and perfect skin like you do online. I guess we both just wanted to look our best for each other. Why don't we just use our phones to look at each other? That's a great idea. Oh, uh, that's so much better. Now I see the Annie I know and love. And I see the Jack I know and love. <sighs> so, Rapunzel, what are we doing today? Just a wash. Oh, your hair is so long and healthy. Thank you, I take good care of it. Have you ever thought about donating it? Um, 
I don't know, is that a thing? Oh, you could be making a huge difference in someone's life. Many people have lost their hair due to illnesses and would love a wig made from hair like yours. Oh. Plus, think about how modern and stylish a shorter cut could be. Mm, I don't know, my hair is kind of my trademark. Will you be giving the gift of confidence to someone in need? Right, but my prince uses it to climb my tower. What? My prince. He brings me flowers and chocolates, and I use my hair to let him in. Well, think of all the lives you could be changing. Hundreds with just your hair alone. I don't know. I really like him. Okay, so just a bosh? Mm -hmm. Please, yeah. He likes it when it smells good. So, Peter, how can I help you today? Uh, it's Tinkerbell. We've been having some issues. Tell me more about that. She's just so clingy, always wanting to be with me all the time. Sounds like she's very attached to you. It's suffocating! Plus, her jealousy's gotten way worse. Every time I go hang out with the Lost Boys, she wants to know what other fairies are there, and then she doesn't want me talking to them. It's like, no matter what I say, she doesn't believe me. Have you tried talking to her about this? Yes! And every time I do, she accuses me of gaslighting her and not taking her feelings seriously. Then she flies off in this huff. Perhaps she's feeling insecure in the relationship and needs some reassurance. And I don't know how to deal with that. Have you considered setting some boundaries and having an open and honest conversation about your needs? Boundaries? She doesn't do boundaries, she's a fairy! In a healthy relationship, both partners should have their needs met. I think a bird just hit the window. No, that's her! She just doesn't like me having a female therapist! I just wish people were more open about their feelings, you know? Like, it would literally make things so much easier. What are you talking about? Like, when something's bothering you, or you like someone, literally just tell them. It's literally not that hard. Keeping it bottled up is what makes it unhealthy, you know? Right. Plus, expressing yourself makes you feel so much better. And it makes the people around you feel way better. It's literally what the world needs right now. Hold on, I gotta find a meme for this. I've been actually wanting to tell you something. Yes, this is what I'm talking about. Go ahead, what's up? I think we should change the choreography for the competition. What, what's wrong with it? We need to step up our game if we want to win. Oh, <laughs> we've literally been practicing this for weeks. It's my choreography. It's just not good enough. I literally cannot believe you're doing this right now. I'm just expressing my feelings. Well, how healthy for you? I was bottling it up. Fine, is there anything else you want to get off your chest to strengthen our relationship? I like your boyfriend. You know what? Let's just keep things to ourselves from now on. There's probably a meme for that. Oh, Cinderella. I have searched the entire kingdom to find the one whose foot fit the glass slipper. I can't wait to spend eternity with you. Will you marry me? I would be honored. Never have I been so happy. It's a dream come true. You are the most perfect princess. But... Before we proceed, there's something I need to discuss. What is it, my prince? Prenuptial agreement, just a formality, but it'll protect my assets in case anything goes wrong in our marriage. Oh, I had no idea this was something you wanted. Just a precaution, quite normal. Hmm, what about trust and commitment? Well, in a fairy tale, you never know what's around the corner. But love is the magic that makes fairy tales come true. True, but there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes, so just here, here, and initial here. <laughs> I think first I'd like to show this to my fairy god lawyer. Of course. Take your time. <laughs> oh, sweet phone. My constant companion. Thou art my solace. My connection to the world more dear to me than any mortal man. My love, why dost thou ignore me so? Why art thou always lost in thy phone's glow? What sayest thou, my dear? I was just checking Instagram. But I've been trying to speak to thee for hours. Doth thy phone mean more to thee than our love? I fear it doth. I am addicted to the constant scroll, the endless notifications, the rush of likes and comments. This infatuation is tearing us apart! Must I stand aside while thy phone consumes thy every thought? I cannot turn my back on my beloved phone. Our love must come to an end. Doth thou not see how superficial thy obsession is? Thou art out of touch with the modern world! Thou art a relic of a bygone age! Thou art the one consumed by vanity, seeking validation through thy phone! And thou art a fool to think that I care of thy opinions! Dost thou not see what thou hast lost? I care not for thy words, dear boy. Thou art a thing of the past, a mere memory. Now be gone. Ah, oh, sweet foam, thou art all I need. Happy Valentine's Day, Lisa. Joe, they're beautiful. And chocolates. You always know what to get me. I just want you to know how special you are. Well. I got you something too. Aw, you're the best. Just something to 
show you how much I care about your safety. And to make sure I never lose you. What is it? Just open it. What's in the box? Don't be afraid. Lisa, what's in the box? It's just a token of my affection. Open it. An air tag. A tracking device? So I always know where you are. To always keep you close to me. It's romantic. I don't want you keeping tabs on me. I just care about you so much, Joe. I want to be able to find you quickly if anything ever happened. What could ever happen? Nothing. Silly. As long as you're mine. And you'll always be mine, right? Hey, Jess. Everything okay? Yeah, just making the fries. Yeah, I see you're making them in any way. Yeah, I just want to be original. That's great. But hey, at McDonald's, we try to keep things consistent for our customers. I just want to be creative, you Yeah, know? that's fine. It's just, you know, we can't deviate too much from our usual systems. Why? You don't think customers will like my McMoji fries? I know what I'm doing. We got to make sure we're keeping things consistent for the customers. Well, maybe they want something new and exciting. Look, the smiley fry. <laughs> our fries have been made the same way for decades, because that's what people want. Well, I just want to express myself at work. Is that not allowed? That's fine. It's just, we got to think about the business. You always criticize everything that I do. Calm down, OK? It's just, we got to think about the bigger picture. I don't care about the big picture. I'm an artist. I'm only trying to help, but we can't start serving emoji fries at McDonald's. Hi, here. What is this? Angry fry? Yes, I quit. <laughs> and a poop fry. <laughs> Betty, I think it's time we had a serious talk about Archie. <laughs> what about him, Veronica? It's no secret that we both have feelings for him. So what do you want to do about it? I think it's time we figure out who Archie really wants. And the other person needs to back off. What makes you think you're the one he wants? What makes you think you're the one he wants? I don't know, maybe because we've been best friends since we were like kids. And maybe because he's always flirting with me. He only flirts with you because he knows it bugs me. Your crush is so cute, but so boring. Archie needs someone that will let him be himself, not always controlling him. Well, if you let him be himself, You'd pick me. So, either way, I would win. Face it, Betty, you'll always be in the friend zone. Then, why does he say I have wifey written all over me? Probably because you keep writing it on yourself. <laughs> That's just a silly doodle. You're such a child, Betty. We both know Archie's ready for something. More. So, Peter, what brings you in today? It's just this whole never growing up thing. I can't shake the feeling that I want to be young forever. I understand you want to hold on to your youth. But it's important to grow and change as a person. But why? Growing up means duties and responsibilities. I just want to fly and have fun. Growing up also means new opportunities and experiences. You'll be able to form deeper relationships and make a positive impact on the world. Look, I already have great relationships with the Lost Boys and Tinkerbell. Plus, I make a positive impact by bringing joy to Neverland. Those are wonderful, but... You may be limiting yourself. What's wrong with me the way I am? Nothing. Look, it's okay to fear change. I'm just saying it's important to face those fears and embrace the unknown. I just feel like everything good will disappear if I grow up. The people and things that you love can still be a part of your life. And who knows, you might find even more as you become an adult. Ah, uh, don't say that word. I don't want to be an adult. Being an adult can kiss my little green ass. Hey, can I talk to you for a minute? Sure. What's up? It's come to my attention that you've been flirting with a lot of our customers. What do you mean? I'm just being friendly. Some have reported feeling uncomfortable with the way that you've been interacting with them, and we just want to make sure that everyone that comes into the store feels welcome and respected. Could you give me an example of what you mean? For instance, a customer mentioned you told them they had a great smile, and then you asked if they were single. That could be perceived as flirting. Okay. Okay. I get what you mean. What about you? Do you have a boyfriend? That's not relevant to the conversation. Come on, it's just one date. Th that's not appropriate. I'm sorry, boss. It's just, it's just so cute when you're all business-like. The point is, <laughs> we need to keep things professional with the customers. Okay, boss. I'll try to behave myself. Great. Thank you for understanding. So, Piggy, what brings you in today? I just don't feel important, Doc. My brothers get all the attention. That's a very common feeling for middle children. Yeah, my big brother builds this fancy brick house. So special, firstborn, everyone loves him. Then there's my little brother. He gets away with everything. He builds a straw house and people just think he's cute. I'm just stuck in the middle. How does that make you feel? Like I'm invisible, like no one cares. 
You know my little brother gets used as a therapy pig now? People cuddle and play with him all day. I get nothing. You know, everyone in a family gets attention in different ways and at different times. And just because you're not getting it right now doesn't mean you're not valued. Sure feels that way. Nobody likes average. Have you tried talking to your siblings about this? They wouldn't listen. They're too busy with their own lives. I understand how you feel. It can be hard to find your place when you're the piggy in the middle. Don't use that term. It can be very triggering for me. Mom, Dad, can I talk to you about something? What is it? So I've been thinking a lot about my future, and I've decided that I want to become a psychic. Jane, that's not a real career. I knew you were going to say that, Mom. I want your support to pursue a degree in psychic studies. That's not even a real major. Um, I knew you were going to say that, Dad. Jane, please stop predicting everything. It's getting annoying. I'm just using my ability, which proves that I'm making the right decision. The only thing you've predicted is that we wouldn't approve. That's not exactly a hard thing to Look, do. I know my abilities are strong. I can see my future is going to be successful. It's not a stable career path. I knew that you'd say that. Please stop predicting everything. We are trying to have a serious conversation here. I can't help it. That's how my ability works. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. I knew you'd say that. We can't have a conversation with you predicting everything. This is ridiculous! I knew he'd walk away. All I'm saying is that I think I'm the nicest person in the world. <laughs> oh, come on now. I'm way nicer than you. Uh, no way. I do way more volunteer work than you, and I put everyone before myself. Oh, that's cute. I go out of my way to make people's days better every single day. Uh, well, you only do nice things for attention. Well, you only do nice things to make yourself feel good. You're a fraud. You're a fraud. Trying to one-up people with your fake kindness. <laughs> How dare you? You're the one who's fake. How dare me? How dare you? Oh my goodness. I can't believe we said those things. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean it. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it either. I'm sorry first. I started it. Well, I'm the most sorry. I should have never gotten that angry. Stop trying to one-up me with your sorriness. Oh, oh, you are nowhere near as sorry as I am. Oh, believe. If we were at a sorry competition, guess who would win? Ah, <sighs> Sleeping Beauty. Finally, I have found you. And now, with this kiss, I shall awaken you from your slumber. Hmm. No, not again. Can't you see I'm trying to sleep here? But my dear, I am your prince. Just what I needed, another prince trying to kiss me awake. I don't care who you are, I just want to go back to sleep. But my love, I am the one prophesied to save you. I don't need saving. I was actually having a really great dream and you woke me up. You were under the spell of a wicked fairy. It was my duty to break it. You couldn't resist being the hero, could you? But we're meant to be together. I care more about my sleep than your cheesy romance. How dare you reject me? I'm the most eligible bachelor in the whole kingdom. Oh, I'm sorry. Was I supposed to be impressed by your ego? Now, if you'll excuse me. Excuse me, I'm going back to sleep. Fine, uh, you're just a boring old princess anyways. On to the next. Oh, Charlotte, have you ever been in love? I've had crushes, but never truly in love. How about you, Emma? Oh, I've had my share of suitors, but no one compares to my current beau. Mr. Knightley. I have heard he's quite handsome and charming. I am so lucky to have him by my side. Hmm. I've always found Mr. Knightley to be a bit stuffy and uptight. Mr. Knightley is a perfect gentleman. Perfectly boring, you mean? I prefer someone with more fire and passion, like Mr. Bingley. Mr. Bingley? Well, he's nothing more than a shallow peacock. How dare you speak of Mr. Bingley in such a manner? He may not be as serious as Mr. Knightley, but at least he knows how to have fun. Fun? That's all you care about, Charlotte. What about... Intelligence and stability. Mr. Knightley has both those qualities in abundance. I'd prefer a little bit of fun over a lifetime of boredom any day. Well, I suppose we'll have to agree to disagree. Oh, Emma, I wish we didn't argue over this. I just care about you and I want you to be happy. I agree. We both deserve someone who will treat us right. Mom, Dad, I've been thinking a lot about what I want to do after I graduate. I really want to go to law school. That's great, honey. Wait a minute. We talked about this. We thought you should become a clown. I don't want to be a clown. I want to be a lawyer. We were just really excited to see you perform at children's parties. What gave you that idea? Well, we may have accidentally filled out the application for clown college instead of law school on your behalf. You can't be serious. We 
we thought you'd be happier as a clown. I want to make a difference in the world. I want to be a lawyer to help people. Being a clown is just as important. You're bringing joy to people's lives. And carrying on your family legacy. But I have my own dreams and aspirations. I want to make the world a better place through the justice system. Your mother and I never had a chance to chase our own dreams. We inherited the family clown business and never looked back. We just want what's best for you. But we want you to have the choice to make your own path. Thank you. That means a lot to me. We love you and we support you in whatever you choose. Even if it's law school. Aurelia, we need to talk. What is it, Mom? Oh, I can't believe you're dating someone from the Zorgon clan! They're nothing but trouble! What are you talking about? Zephyr's family is wonderful. They've always been kind and welcoming to me. Their customs and traditions are so different from us. I just don't want you to get caught up in that way of life! Mom, I love Zephyr. His family's traditions may be different, but that's what makes them special. And I'm not gonna break up with him because you don't like his family! Zorgons are not a kind of aliens, and their organs have that weird glow in the multiple pupils. I just don't trust that. Now what's with all the extra appendages? That's not fair! Zephyr is kind and caring! But I am your mother, and I know what's best, and he's not good enough for you. No, I'm not gonna let you or anyone come between us! I love him! You will break up with him and find someone better! Zephyr is my soulmate! Our love will last eternity! There's nothing you can do that will change that! And it so happens that I like his extra appendages. <gasps> Lena, what's wrong? I just broke up with my boyfriend. Oh no, what happened? He told me he was seeing someone else. Someone he liked better than me. I'm so sorry, Lena. That must have been really hard for you. No, I thought we were happy. You'll get through this. You'll find someone that treats you right. Who would do this? <laughs> There's something I need to tell you. What? What is it? I'm dating your ex-boyfriend. What do you mean you're dating my ex-boyfriend? I thought we were best friends. I know we are. I just, I didn't mean for this to happen and I, I really liked him and I couldn't help it. You knew how I felt about him and you still went behind my back and started dating him? I never meant to hurt you. I don't know what to do, Katie. I don't think we can be friends right now. I'm so sorry, Lena. <laughs> Hey guys, here's a quick tutorial on how we made these skits. We call them chatbot movies because we use a chatbot to help write them. Here's how it works. First, we come up with an idea for a skit. Something that has comedy potential, like Cinderella goes to therapy, or a girl tells her parents she wants to go to college to be a psychic. Then, we use a chatbot to develop a short script. We give the chatbot a prompt, and then seconds later, it gives us a script. But the first pass is usually bad, so we edit the prompt multiple times and the chatbot keeps rewriting it until we get a bunch of different variations. Then we take the best parts of each variation and we mash them together to make a script that we like. Then we get some actors, we film it in front of a green screen so that later we can remove the green, and then we get another robot to create a background image. So we go to the artificial intelligence art generator and tell it what we want. It can create any kind of image you tell it. It gives us a few options. We choose one that looks good, we drop it in, a few adjustments to make it look like it matches the shot of the actors, then back to editing the scene, and our chatbot movie is born. Please stop predicting everything! We are trying to have a serious conversation here! I can't help it! That's how my ability works! Think you have a fun concept for a chatbot movie? Leave it in the comments. Maybe we'll make yours. Don't forget to hit the like button. Thanks for watching.